Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second linear regression video. This one is gonna be about residuals. And residuals are really important because they tell you how far your actual answer is from what the line of best fit predicted it to be. So obviously the closer your answer is to the predicted, the better the line is. Also, when graphing residuals, you can easily see what model, whether a linear or a nonlinear model, is better to use. So let's begin with this problem. What are residuals? Well, residuals is actually just the vertical distance from the point, your actual point, to the line of best fit, okay? So your residuals are the vertical distance. So this point here is actually x comma y. And this point here is actually x comma y hat. And the residual is going to be what I have down here, which is y minus y hat. I like those colors. So I think of it as like a p, like an AP course, actual minus predicted. Okay. So don't mix them up because typically answers, um, if, if there's a multiple choice answers, typically one of them is like seven and the other one is uh, negative seven. So you have to make sure you have it in the right order. So it's the vertical distance and residuals are actual minus predicted. So I'm gonna run through a few examples, basic examples on how to find the residuals. Okay, find the residual for the point two seven if you have the least square regression line y hat equals two plus three x. So the first thing I wanna to say to myself is residual is equal to y minus y hat. Do not write r because r is the correlation coefficient and we don't wanna mix those up. So I'm looking for the residual, so this is my unknown. y is the point, remember this is x comma y. y is the point seven minus I now have to find my y hat. Well, that's great because I have a uh, least square regression line, y hat equals 2 plus 3x. So all I have to do is say y hat equals 2 plus 3x and y hat is equal to 2 plus 3 times 2. So that's going to equal to a total of 8. So my y has 8 and I just put that there. And that's equal to negative 1. So my residual is negative 1. Okay. What I want you to notice here different color highlighter. This is my actual, this is my prediction. So a negative residual says that you overestimated. If you think about it, isn't seven less than eight or isn't our prediction eight greater than seven? So we overestimated when it's a negative residual. Okay, let's try another one. Slow down the video if I'm going too fast. Um, well, or stop the video and try the problem yourself. Okay, find the residual for negative two, negative one. I'm using the same exact equation. We're gonna go residual is equal to y minus y hat. As soon as you see the word residual, you should write down this formula. We're looking for this guy here, so we'll keep that there. And then equals y, which is negative one, minus, I need to get the y hat now. So I'm gonna go two plus three x, and just be careful with the math, that's two minus six, negative four. So this is gonna be a minus four. So negative one minus minus four, that's a plus four. So that's gonna be a three, okay? So three is positive, so I underestimated. If you think about it, negative one, and then you got negative four as your estimation. Negative four is under negative one or below it. So when it's positive residual, it's an underestimate. Okay, let's try one more. Find the residual for the point. Now don't stop the video because there's gonna be other types of problems. So we have residual one five. Well, five is my, um, y and if i plug in one into this case i also get five for y hat and so my residual is zero and what that means is that this point one five lies exactly on the line of best fit so that's all that means the residual is zero it means that it's actually on the line okay so let's try this part right here 
If the residual is 2, now I'm giving you the residual for a given x, what is the actual y? Well, in any of these cases, anytime you see the word residual, you should write out the formula. Residual is equal to y minus y hat. The residual is 2. y is what I'm looking for. That's my actual y. Minus. Now, be careful with that minus, okay? Just put it down there. And then we got here, y hat is equal to 2 plus 3 times 3, and that's 11. If I add 11 to the other side, I get y to be 13. So the, the key is to always write down the formula. Only one thing can be unknown. If you're looking for the actual y, then residual and y hat needs to be known. Okay? So let's try an AP question. The weight in pounds of a full backpack and the corresponding number of books in the backpack were recorded for each of 10 college students. Once again, degrees of freedom, if we were going to do that, would be eight. The resulting data were used to create the residual plot. So this is what the residual plot looks like. You can tell residual and X is the number of books, okay? So this is your residual. So it says the resulting data were used to create the residual plot and the regression output is shown below. They gave you this on the AP, and I just created the line of best fit for you. The slope is 0.53. The y-intercept is 10.53. I need parameters, books, and weight. Okay, remember books is x, weight I got from up here. And I believe the question was for four books, what is the uh, residual? I'm sorry, I didn't put out the question, but yes, for four books, what's the residual? So what I have to do here is I want to say... Um, or what is the actual weight of the backpack if there were four books? That was the question. Residual equals y minus y hat. And what I needed to do was I needed to say, okay, this guy right here, okay, is about 2.5, let's say, or 2.25. I'm going to just say 2.5. I'm looking for the actual, and now what I need to do is I need to use this here to find the predicted weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four books, because that was my question. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't put the question in. I'm going to take 10.53, and I'm going to add 0.53 times 4, and I got 12.65 in my calculator. So 12.65. And then I'm going to add that to 2.5, and I'm going to get 15 point, sorry, just y equals 15.15. And I believe the answers were like uh, 10, 15, 20, and so on. So it wasn't going to be like 14, 15, 16. So that's how you do this problem. So this is the residual graph. Sometimes they give you the residual, sometimes they give you a residual graph, and then you would have to find the residual, but here's the point, guys. The point is, every time you see residual, write out this formula. And we're gonna finish the um, video with one last question. And earlier in the video, I said residual graphs are really important because they show either linear or nonlinear models should be used. Well, how do we know which one? So these are all residual graphs. And if a residual graph shows no type of pattern, then a linear model should be used. So this says, which of the plot provides the strongest evidence that a regression line is appropriate? Well, that's gonna be this guy right here because this guy has no pattern. He has a pattern, he has a pattern, he has a pattern, and then he has a pattern. This guy is the best. So letter C is the strongest. I mean, Letter D and E are like, eh, they're okay. But C, you cannot find any pattern. So C is the strongest, okay? And that's how we do residuals. Leave a comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.